Hello. So previously we worked on adding different device modules to an application, like device confirmable, lockable, trackable, and so on. And now we're going to add one more device module that is actually not a part of the gem device, but a separate gem named device invitable. So here is the problem. We have some users inside our application and we want to create new users on our own without the users physically taking the time to register in the application. We just want to create users and possibly invite them. Now, how can we create users in our application? One way would be just have a form where we can create the users or where we do it in the console. So for example, I open the Rails console and say user.create and we need an email. That would be something like this at gmail.com and we would need a password now the password can be something like one two three four five six but uh, it's not uh, a really nice way to set a password you can actually use device friendly token for example like this i will create a new user and uh, i would say the password would be device dot friendly token and let's say uh, 5 to 20. Okay, and it basically creates a kind of a random password and uh, creates the user. So let's actually have a look at our users. Here, previously we had four users in our application and after running these commands in the console, we have two more users inside our application. But it is still not the best way to work. What if we want to have a way to actually invite users and send them invitation emails and create the users inside our application at the same time? So for this, we have the gem device invitable. Basically, let's see how it will be working. So I will take the gem device invitable and add it to our gem file. Okay, now I run uh, bundle. And next we need to type rails generate device invitable install and let's see what this does. Okay, so it has created a locales file and also uh, added something inside device.rb. So let's have a look at what it added. I'm going to config initializes device.rb and here we have the configuration for invitable that has just been added. So we can set for how long the invitation token will be valid. Basically, when we invite a user, he is sent an invitation email and for how long the invitation email uh, with a link to join the application will be valid. So by default, it is valid forever, but you can set it to some kind of other period, for example, two weeks. Then how many invitations a user can send? So it can be five, it can be unlimited quantity. So I don't see any sense in changing the first uh, uh, variable or the second variable. Then invitation key is basically the regex for the email. Then uh, whether invitations can be resent or not. So by default, it is true. And it's normal to be able to send an invitation to the same user multiple times. And uh, by whom are users invited? So in our case, they are invited by other users. And you see, when we invite a user, we can also say it, the ID of the user that invited uh, a user. So we can track who invited whom. Okay, let's actually see how it works. So next thing to type rails generate device invitable for a model and the model is going to be user. And you see it added something inside user.rb. So you see it added invitable. It has also now device invitable, a uh, non-device but uh, integrated into device module. Okay, and it created a new migration. So we are going to db migrate and here we have a new migration, add the device invitable. And basically everything is self-explanatory here. So when the invitation was created, when it was sent, when the user accepted the invitation, how many invitations a user has and by whom the invitation, uh, by whom a user was invited. Okay, let's type rails db migrate and see what is next. Well, basically this is it. This is the whole setup. Let's see how it works. So I will try to start the server. Okay. And uh, let's go to our roots. 
So we should have new roots for invitations. Let's see. Yeah, so here we have uh, a user invitation path, remove user invitation path, and an interesting one, new user invitation path. So let's actually navigate to slash users, slash invitations, slash new. Let's go to slash users, slash invitations, or just invitation, no, slash new. Okay, and you see, we have a new view to send an invitation. It is a device invitable view. And everything that we can put in here is just an email. So you see, I try to put in a blank email, it doesn't work. I'll try to put in something like this. Email isn't valid. So I will try to put in some kind of email. Okay, I press send invitation. And what happens? You see, it says an invitation email has been sent to the user. And in the same time, I can go to the console and see that actually an email has been sent. So here is the email and it says hello, and then the email address, and somebody has invited you to the application. You can uh, confirm by pressing this button. So this is kind of a button, accept invitation. Okay, I will just copy this. And also I will go into our users and see, you see, the user has been actually created in our database. So when we send an invitation, the user is already created in the database and he gets an email where he can accept the invitation. So let's try to log out of the application and go to this URL, imitating the process of pressing the button to accept the invitation. And you see, we will be redirected to our application and we get our unique invitation token. So if I go to this path, you see, we can set ourselves a password. So let's set a password and press set my password. It was also a device invitable view. And you see, we are actually logged in as this user. So when we accepted the invitation, we set a password for ourselves for the application and we got logged in. So looks nice. Now we can actually go into our users and uh, see. So the user is here. And uh, let's go a bit deeper into understanding device invitable. So how can we know which users have been created by invite and which users have accepted the invitation? There are actually methods for this. We can go to uh, created by invite. Yeah, there is a way to check if the user has been created by invite. Let's add this to our users. So I will go to our views go to users, index, and I will also check if the user has been created by invite. So let's say user dot created by invite. And uh, you see all the users except of the last one have been created not by invite. Just the last user has been created by invite. And if the user was created not by invite, it means he was created either in the console or he personally manually signed up into the application. And we can actually also check if the invitation has been accepted. So we can say, if we go in the readme, there must be a method, invitation accepted. Yeah, let's check. So uh, we will type user dot invitation accepted, and it should also give us true or false. Okay, so in the last case, we have invitation accepted true, and for all the other cases, invitation accepted is false. Well, why is that? Because all the users, except for this one, have been uh, created not by invite. So makes sense. Okay, and actually what if we want to see uh, which users were invited by the current user, for example, or which users were invited by each user? Well, we can actually add the uh, uh, has many kind of relationship. So uh, if we go to our user.rb, we can say something like uh, has many invitees Uh, has many invitees class name user and foreign key would be something like invited 
by ID. Okay, and let's count the entities of uh, each user. So we will say uh, entities dot count. And here entities. And it would give us how many users each user has invited. So uh, is there somebody who has a one? Yeah, so we will log in as this user, hello Cosigo, then we send an invitation to this user. Okay, let's just replicate. Uh, we would go to users slash invitation slash new. Yeah, actually let's add a link to this inside our uh, navbar. This is a useful link, a link to be able to invite a user. So go into our application HTML, we would add the, inside the navbar a link to invite user and it would lead to new user invitation path. Okay. Let's see if it works. I'm refreshing. Here we have the button to invite a user. Okay. And I will send an invitation to some kind of user. So send an invitation. And now I'm going to see the users and we see, so the current user has one NVT, here he is, Alfredo, and he was created by invite. He has not yet accepted his invitation. Okay, let's uh, actually accept the invitation as that user. So I will go to the logs and find the email. He has the email, I'll just copy this and go to this uh, link. Okay, you are already signed in, so a signed in user cannot uh, uh, accept an invitation for another user and it totally makes sense. So I will log out. And now once again, I'll go to this link. I can set a password. Okay. And let's see, so I'm logged in as this Alfredo. I'm going to users, invitation accepted is true, uh, no invitees, and the, the user was created by invite. Okay, looks uh, good. And actually, there can be cases when somebody will tell you, I didn't receive the invite or something, and you would like to uh, actually just resend the invitation email. So uh, there is uh, uh, a method, actually we can write, uh, we can create a button uh, to resend uh, an invitation email for the user. So yeah, let's actually do that. So first of all, we would go to, our, let's say, uh, roots. So here are our roots. And here we already created a member do to ban a user and we will also uh, create a, an option to uh, resend invitation. Yeah, to resend an invitation. And now we would go to our users controller. So go into controllers. Uh, users controller and it would be uh, def resend invitation. Here again, we would find the user and think in what case uh, can we resend the, the invitation? So uh, we can resend the invitation if uh, the user was created by invite and uh, the invitation has not been uh, accepted yet. So and at user dot uh, invitation accepted equals false. Then we can uh, have a button to uh, user dot invite. So it would be something dot. Yeah, he has the method invite. So we would have user dot invite and we can also have some kind of redirect uh, so redirect to users path uh, notice user re-invited and if the user uh, was not created by the invite and or if the user has accepted his uh, invitation so we would have an else uh, we would just redirect redirect back to users saying alert a user is active 
Okay, and we would need to add a button for this uh, recent invitation in our view. So let's go to our users. And here we have a link to ban a user and we will also have a link to resend an invitation. Okay, so link to uh, resend invitation. Then what is go the part going to be? Let's see. Let's go and see what we added in our roots. So we have a resend invitation user path at user method patch. Okay. And let's see if it does something. So I'm going back to our slash users. And here we have this uh, recent invitation. Yeah. Now we have it visible for all the users. We shouldn't want to have it visible for all the users. We want to, it to be visible only for the users that have been created by invite. And the users that have uh, not accepted the invitation. So going back. I will uh, just copy this validation. So if the user was created by invite and the invitation was not accepted, then we'll have this button visible. So I would say if all of this, then we have the recent invitation button visible. Okay, going back. And yeah, we should have set the user like this. Okay, and uh, whom can we actually invite? Uh, Reinvite, nobody. So let's create a new user and try to reinvite him. So I'm sending an invitation. The user must have received an email. Here it is. Let's go back to our users. And here for this user that has uh, been created by invite, but he did not accept the invitation, we have this button to resend the invitation. So let's try pressing this button. I press resend invitation. It says user has been reinvited. And let's see the logs. You see the invitation email has been sent once again. So it basically works. And uh, it is the most important thing. Uh, these are the most important things that you need to know about device invitable. And really it is like the correct way to invite users into your application. You shouldn't uh, be creating the users uh, inside a regular Rails controller. Uh, the right way is to use kind of device invitable and inviting users to your application. And uh, you actually don't have to uh, always give them access rights so you don't have to make them active users in your application. You can also make the uh, invitations non-delivered. So uh, there must be actually an option for this. Uh, or it must be like skip. Yeah, there's the option to skip an invitation. So you can just uh, say that you want to skip the invitation when uh, uh, creating the user and the invitation email will not be sent. So it will be just a user that uh, you can do some kind of database operations with. Yeah, and basically that's it for device invitable. Not uh, much more to say. So thanks for being with me and good luck implementing the feature in your Ruby on Rails application. Have a great time.